Here we are with a new video about Once Human. Today, after finishing the missions, I decided to head back home and complete almost all, or at least the vast majority, of the journeys. As you can see, I built the mailbox so you can send me some letters. Just kidding, of course. But apart from the jokes, we have what I suppose is the best mission in the whole game, which is to go photograph an animal. I'm going to choose a deer since there are always some beautiful deer not far from my home. There they are in all their beauty, surrounded by the world's fauna. How cute! Let's take a picture before they notice me. And this journey is complete. Now let's go craft the curiosity catcher. You might ask what this device is for, which we can find in the supplies workbench. Well, it's very useful because it will detect all the different mineral veins around you that might otherwise go unnoticed if they're hidden in the clearings. Now let's see how to use it. Just place it in the quick item bar or open your inventory and voila, it will detect every metal present around you. Let's put up the first wall of our house. It's a beautiful solid wood wall. I'd say this is the perfect spot. Obviously there will be more walls, not just this one, but the missions require this one, so let's do it. Okay, let's move on to creating the first door. I'm not sure yet if this will be the official entrance to my house, but since it needed to be built, why not put it up? I'm talking as if the door is already in place, but actually it's not. We've only put up the wall with the hole for the door. Now we need to install the door or else everyone will really be able to get in here. But now let's add a window as well because otherwise it wouldn't really be a house. Although with just one window, it could make an excellent cell. I'd say the best spot to place the wall with the window is right here. I like cooking and watching outside while waiting for my delicious dishes to finish cooking. And now let's actually put in the window. I don't like leaving missions unfinished. And here we are with the window installed and everything in place. I'd say my house is slowly taking shape, at least that's what I hope. But let's move on, as I was a bit behind on these missions, and talk about weapon modifications and crafting. First, let's see how to simply add a mod. Open your inventory, select the weapon you want to modify. I'm choosing this pump shotgun with eight or nine shots. Then you can apply the mod pack that interests you. Another aspect of mods is the ability to enhance their values through enchanting. To do this, go to the mod section where you'll see all the mods, including those already installed on weapons. To upgrade them, you'll need to first remove them from the weapon. We'll be upgrading the green mod, which will be useful in the future. To increase the mod's level, you'll need to pay with resources. For example, the green mods required 50 energy and 6 weapon mod parts, which we'll soon see how to obtain. Another aspect of mods is the mod schematic, where you can see all the mods, including those already installed on weapons or armor. To enhance them, you need to first remove them from the weapon or armor. For upgrading, we'll use weapon mod parts, which can be obtained through the disassembly bench. There, you can break down less useful mods to collect the parts you need and then enhance the mods that are important to you. 
Another interesting aspect of the game is the mimetic specializations, which are unlocked every five levels. These specializations provide unique bonuses that you can always reset based on your needs. I've chosen these particular ones as they seemed most suitable for my current requirements, but you can select the ones that best fit your playstyle. In the end, if you choose multiple categories, you'll also receive a unique bonus for those categories. This aspect of the game is really interesting. Now I wanted to build a new item that will be useful on gloomy days, the rainwater collector. With this, you'll be able to do wonders and even distill water. For now, I've only constructed this, but soon we'll proceed with setting up our water farm. Of course, the rain stopped right after I installed the rainwater collector, but we're not letting that discourage us. Besides, my poor deviations needed recharging, and what better recharge than a little party? That's right, we bought a nice radio for our little critters, and now we're going to set up a great light base, depending on who enjoys it the most, underneath. As any good carpenter would do, we've moved the electrical outlets near the garage. It's better to have them there than inside the house. Now, we're going to place our second supporting column for the beautiful ceiling, where we'll create this magical light display. And here we are, after setting up the ceiling and figuring out which lights are best for each of them. Let's start the placement. Let the party begin. All the lights are in place. What do you think? I'm really happy with how they turned out. They create a beautiful effect. This video is a bit shorter than usual because I'm excited for the next one, which will focus entirely on the final details. Let's see if anyone notices. For today, that's a wrap. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a like or comment, and why not? Activate the notification bell for updates on my videos. Thanks.